Now let's have a look at Diastrus algorithm. So Diastrus algorithm given was given by Dutch scientist Itzer Diastra in 1959. It is used in connected weighted and directed graphs. This is very important. It works on connected weighted and also directed graphs. So it is used to find the shortest path tree and it, it finds the shortest path from one node to all the other nodes of the graph. So this algorithm is widely used in network routing protocols. Some of the protocols that use this algorithm is uh, OSPF or ISIS. So these are pretty famous algorithms which are used by uh, routers, routing protocols. So now let's have a look at uh, Diastrus algorithm. Yeah, so give it a graph G and a source node A. The algorithm is used to find the shortest path, one having the lowest cost between the given source node A and every other node. So Diastrus algorithm is also used to find cost of shortest paths. And again, it's from a, a source node to a destination nodes. So the way it works is we first select source node, which is also called the initial node. We define an empty set N that will be used to hold nodes to which a shortest path has been found. Uh, we label the initial node with zero because the path, the distance from that node to that node itself is zero and insert it into N. And we repeat step five to seven until the destination node is in uh, N or there are no more label nodes in N. We consider each node that is not in N and is connected by an edge from the newly inserted node. So on step six, uh, if the node that is not in N has no label, then set the label of the node to the newly uh, the label of the newly inserted node plus the length of the edge. So so we are we're trying to find the total cost of the path from the source node to that specific node. And if it's not the case, then the node that is not in N was already labeled. Then we set its new label to the minimum of label of newly inserted vertex plus the length of the edge and old label. So we try to find the minimum. So if the node is already labeled, then we try to figure out if there's any other path to that node, which produces a smaller cost, which uses a smaller weight. So we compare the label of newly inserted vertex plus the length of edge and the old label to see which one is smaller. Whatever is smaller, we put it in our uh, table. And then we pick a node not in A that has the smallest label and assign to it and add it to N. So this is these steps are break, broken down to be implemented in code. So if you look at the simulation, that'll clear out more about it. So we have a graph on the right that we are gonna visit all the nodes and find the shortest path to those nodes from our starting node here, which is A. So I have a list here or a set of all unvisited nodes. So I've crossed out A because that is our starting node and the cost to that node is always gonna be zero. So uh, let's. Uh, so the so we have a table here, which is uh, basically to keep track of the distances from our starting node, which is A. So at the beginning, we have not visited any nodes uh, or vertices. So that is the reason why uh, the distance from A, our starting node or vertex to other nodes is infinity. So we move forward with the algorithm. So uh, now first we examine the edges living A. And uh, if you look at it, we see uh, there are two edges living A, which is four and two. So we select the smallest one. Uh, uh, but before that, we update the table. So we find that there are two edges that's living A, which is A, B, and A, C. So that means we can now reach B and C from A. So the cost that we're gonna need to reach C is two. We put that on the table. And also the cost that we're gonna need to reach B is four. So we put that on the table. 
So those are the updates that we have to the table. So that's why it's green now. So, uh, so now on the next step, uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna select the smallest edge. So the smallest edge that we have is AC, which is the values two. We had two edges, AC and AB. Among that, we have the smallest one here, which is two. So, and when selecting the edge, we have to make sure that we're gonna select the smallest edge for a vertex, which is unvisited and does not create a cycle. So that's why in this case it is AC. So now we go and visit C. So since we're gonna visit, we have we are visiting C, we cross out C from our unvisited mm -hmm. nodes. So uh, as we visit C, we notice all the edges that's leaving C. So we can see there are multiple edges which is leaving C. So we have uh, B, we have CB, we have CD, and we have CE. So uh, now B was already uh, reachable from A. So we do not add anything new for B, not yet. What we do is D and E. These are the two nodes that that us that that are now new, which are reachable from A. So we update the corresponding values on this table. So we can reach D via C from A. So we need to add this total cost as we try to reach D from A. So from A to C, we, it takes two, and from C to D, it takes four. So total six. So that's why we, we put six here um, in our table. Similarly, we put seven for E because it takes five to reach E from C and it takes two to reach C from A. So we add them up, five plus two is seven. So that's a new update because previously it was infinity. Now it is, uh, we have a smaller uh, weight that we can use to reach E. Now for another one is B. So previously it, uh, it was taking four so if you want to reach B from A, we need uh, we need to spend four cost, or the weight was four. The way we have a direct uh, path from A to B, but if we go to B via C, it is actually smaller because uh, we go to A to C with two, and then C to B with one, so total three. So that's a new short path to B from A. So we update that in our table. So next, we select the smallest edge uh, for a vertex, which is unvisited and does not create a cycle. So in this case, it is CB because that's the smallest one. We have just one here, which is the smallest one. So we go to B. So as we visit B, uh, we cross off B from the unvisited nodes. So uh, just uh, we uh, we're actually repeating the process. So we visit B and notice all the edges that's leaving B. So we found uh, paths to D and E from A with smaller weights. So previously we were able to reach D and E, but now we can reach them with smaller weights. So uh, if you take if you go so if you, if you consider D, previously uh, it was taking around six. It was taking six to reach D. But now it's gonna take five. If you take this path, if you go from A to C, C to B, and then B to D, A to C, which is two, C to B, which is one, and then B to D, which is two, and you add them up, that's total five. So it's actually smaller than the existing one on the table. So we update that here. Similarly, uh, <clears throat> East cost is also updated. Previously, uh, we were take it, uh, we needed seven, uh, to reach E, but now it's gonna take six to reach E because you can go from A to C, C to B, and then B to E. A to C is two, C to B is one, which is three, uh, if you add them up. Now from B to E is three, so total six. So we have a smaller weight or a smaller cost to reach E from A. So we update that on the table. So next, we repeat the process. We select the smallest edge 
So in this case, it is BD. And again, at the smallest edge we for a vertex, which is unvisited and does not create a cycle. So it so in this case, it is BD. So we go to D, right? And we notice all the edges, which is leaving D. And we find that there's no edge, which is leaving D. So we can find any edge, which is leaving D. So we have nothing to do in this step. So we have no update to the table. Then we again select the smallest edge for a vertex which is unvisited and does not create a cycle. So in this case, we have BE, which is the, has a cost of three and it does not create a cycle. So we go to E and visit E. So before that, as we visited D, uh, we, I forgot to tell you, but it's on the slide. We removed that from the unvisited nodes. So now let's go and visit E. So we visit E and notice all the edges that's leaving E. So we have only one edge, which is leaving E, and that is uh, that has a cost of one and it's going to D. So, and if you try to go to D using the shortest path, uh, it actually does not have, it actually does not bring anything new. We already have the shortest path to D, which is five. So if you wanna go to D via E, then it's actually gonna take you more uh, cost. So we don't use that. We don't uh, put that on the table. So, and we also chop off E from the unvisited nodes. So now we have visited all the nodes and this is the shortest path to all the other nodes from A. We have all the weights here on the table. And if you if you look at the graph, that this is the one that is actually showing all the uh, shortest path. Uh, it's showing the shortest path to all the nodes from the starting node A. So that is our diastrus algorithm.